Greetings to you all. Blessings from the Most High. My name is Dr. W. Gabriel Selassie. I, I am the People's Historian. By nature, I am a revolutionary historian, bringing you more information and more insight. Thank you all for subscribing to my YouTube channel. We're getting some play here, and I think it's relatively important that you do spread the word about um, these videos that you watch, particularly the ones that you enjoy, or if you just enjoy debating and getting into it. I see that I've received a number of comments by people who have some quite a number of interesting things to say about some of the things that I've posted. And I welcome your feedback, your engagement, your disagreements about anything that I might say on any of my YouTube channels. I put a lot of time in some of the things that I think about and so for the most part I fundamentally do welcome um, any at or at all um, feedback that you might have. I've also launched a new website thepeopleshistorian.com that has just launched and I will be doing podcasts that will largely be covering aspects of history, world, um, African, European, political, social, cultural, music history, anything that I find to be relevant that is not being covered in textbooks. So if you are tired of listening to the same old, same old, or you believe that there are things that are not being talked about or discussed in your textbooks, you can go to thepeopleshistorian.com and subscribe to my podcast. We have just uploaded several podcasts and we'll be talking about a whole host of issues that won't necessarily be covered in your schools or your textbooks. There's a lot of his story that is actually not being covered. Now, I'm doing this video because I received an inquiry from a former student of mine who asked me what I thought particularly about the particular upcoming Democratic elections. And first of all, I have to say that I am not a Democrat. I am neither a Republican or a Democrat. I got out of the Democratic Party years ago because I believe that the Democratic Party, with the election of Bill Clinton, lost its way. I think Republican criticisms about Bill Clinton, for the most part, and Hillary Clinton were spot on. I think that Bill Clinton for the most part, probably is deep down somewhere in the recesses of the heels, the back of the heels of his feet is probably a decent human being, but it takes a lot of energy to draw all of that out. And I think that overall, he sold out the Democratic Party and sold out progressives of the Democratic Party. Now, one of my students asked me the question about what do I think about the current slate of black candidates and the current slate of white candidates in the Democratic Party. And for the most part, the two black candidates that we had, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris, had some significant issues. And of course, that we've seen over the last couple of days is that Kamala Harris has dropped out of the Democratic race, and I think that that really speaks well um, for her decision-making process and understanding that this race for her was futile. Kamala Harris, to my personal uh, fundamental understanding and belief, is that she, like Cory Booker, are opportunist candidates. I do not have any faith in any African-American person that would spend all the time going to law school to prosecute people and put them in jail, particularly people of color, when you fundamentally know that the justice system is inherently racist. Now, you can make the argument, and it is a plausible argument, and it is some form of an argument that will hold water, that you are getting into the belly of the beast to change the system. Okay. So if you are an individual of color and you decide to become a prosecutor for ever, whatever reason, and I suppose the reason that you will give us is that victims of crime need justice as well. And I hear you because certainly I would not like any family member of mine to be victimized by crime and the perpetrator to get off. 
Now, I have my own feelings about forgiveness because I am a theologian. However, I understand that fundamental argument. However, now you very well know that in the current system of American justice, that it is almost impossible for any person of color to make changes within the criminal justice system. Okay, so you say that we need more judges, more prosecutors. Well, in Los Angeles, for example, they elected a black prosecutor and she has been absolutely horrible. Jackie Lacey is one of the worst prosecutors and I dare say that she will probably be run out of office. So just because you come to me and tell me that you are a person of color and you want to be a prosecutor, that doesn't mean very much of anything. Your actions have to speak louder than your words. And so Kamala Harris's problems are that she attempted as a prosecutor to get in good with police unions. In California, what a lot of people do is that they try to get the police unions behind them because they have a lot of pull and a lot of money and people generally speaking that are not people of color respect the police. Now this didn't bode well for her because she made some really interesting choices about prosecuting people. For example, the adage where she attempted to prosecute black mothers when their kids were not attending school. Now, how do you suppose that in any particular way is adding to the overall workings of trying to fix the justice system? It is not. So my problem with Kamala Harris is that, yeah, I had some problems with her becoming AG. I had some problems with her becoming senator in the state of California because I think that she is an opportunist and she didn't do well for black people and other people of color in California. But there was time as a senator to recoup from that. She should have spent the last six years trying to do things to rectify the justice system rather than running for president of the United States. And it's my personal opinion, her and Cory Booker believed that either one or two things would happen that they would ride this wave where Barack Obama was the first black president. So they thought that, well, those walls of people having some insecurity about voting for black people for president have all been broken. And then two, the uh, fundamental idea here would be that they could get something even if they didn't win, maybe a high cabinet appointment that then then during the next elections, they could then make headway. So for example, maybe you become the attorney general of the United States, or you could become secretary of state or something to that nature, be in more in the public eye, build a brand for yourself, a name for yourself, and then you could run again in the next couple of years. And that's often a tactic that people use. Cory Booker, with his particular problem, is that I think Cory Booker is an outstanding young man. I think he is exceptionally bright. He is probably, arguably, the brightest person on that stage. He certainly is a Rhodes Scholar. He is Ivy League. He has a number of professional degrees, law degree. So I think that he has proven himself academically to be superior. And I think, for the most part, his time as mayor of Newark was fairly decent. I wouldn't give him an A, but I certainly wouldn't give him a C- minus either. So from that particular perspective, I think that he could have taken the time out as senator in the state of New Jersey and built a brand for himself. But no, what is the first thing that these individuals do? Once they reach the Senate, they feel that they need, instead of learning the system, learning how things work, right, building coalitions, spreading yourself out and understanding really what the dynamics are about politics and what people in America actually are going through, you decide to run for president of the United States. Now, I have particular problems with that because as we see with a current person who is president of the United States, this person 
largely is in trouble in the United States because they simply do not know how politics works at that level. Now, you can tell me all day long that you are a different kind of politician and that you are going to drain the swamp and et cetera. And what we found out that instead of draining the swamp, Trump brought the swamp with him. There is a white nationalist, a white supremacist who is actually working for Trump in the White House. So from that particular perspective, I think that what people need to do is gain experience. Now, the problem with Cory Booker essentially is, is that we don't know where his affiliations and his ties are. For the most part, if you just simply Google Cory Booker and Big Pharma, you will notice that he has deep ties to the drug companies in this country. The problem with that is that ordinary people, particularly those people who can't afford prescription drugs, are paying exorbitant amount for their drugs where you could go to Canada, go to Europe, go to Africa, and you can get these same drugs at less or sometimes three, four, five times less the cost than what you would pay for here. It is unconscionable that you've taken money. And I think Cory Booker has taken roughly $200,000 from Big Pharma. I think that that's just morally bankrupt. I really do. Um, and there's reason why Big Pharma is giving you money, Cory Booker. It's because they believe that once they give you money, that they will have a friend in the Senate. And then if you become president, a friend in the White House. And giving that money back isn't going to make things any better because you've already established those friendships and those ties. Now, so that's primarily the problem that I have with Cory Booker. And so the two black candidates, I think, are deeply flawed. Now, what about the white candidates? So you're, that would be the next question. I, for one, think that there are a whole host of white candidates that have a number of flaws, but I'm particularly talking today about those black candidates. Now, for the most part, this is why I think that our next coming election is going to be fundamentally problematic. And I don't think that having a black candidate or a black president is going to matter. Now, we spent the last eight years before the last president came in with President Barack Obama. And I think it was a wonderful thing that a son of Africa a son of America, a black man was finally elected as president. And certainly by any stretch of the imagination, Barack Obama is probably going to go down as one of the better presidents that we've had. Certainly as a historian and my fellow historians already have talked about the idea that his presidency, no scandals, he was able to do one thing that Richard Nixon tried, Harry Truman tried, a host of presidents tried, and that has give us the closest thing that we know of to universal health care. That in and of itself is a triumph. Even Theodore Roosevelt, who backed some form of national health care, couldn't get it done, but Barack Obama came the closest to doing so. So by any stretch of the imagination, that was a great thing because it is far better to help people than it is to hurt people. Now, what do I think about whether or not we're going to have a black candidate? Well, from my particular perspective, a black candidate can sell out and a black president can sell out black people just as easily as a white candidate or a white president. Now, let's ask this fundamental question. Besides Obamacare, what did Barack Obama do for black people? I'm just going to sit here and wait. Okay. What did Barack Obama specifically do for black people? Now, I'm just stating that because every single president that has been elected before and after Barack Obama has done things for white people. So I'm waiting.
Now you can message me here and let me know exactly what it was that he did. What I'm going to say is, is that I don't care if the candidate is black or white. The central question that black folk, the sons and daughters of Africa ought to be asking is, what is your black agenda? And if you don't have a black agenda, I do not care if you are a Democrat or a Republican. I don't care if you are a Green Party member, a Libertarian, black people should not be voting for people who do not have a legitimate black agenda. So then you're going to ask yourself, well, why do we need to have a black agenda? Because there, if we said that we needed a white agenda, that would be racist. We already have a white agenda, and that is just about everything that Congress does. Every law that the president signs, generally speaking, has always been for white America. And we can go from the GI Bill and just start rattling them off, civil rights movement, the affirmative action laws benefited white males more than they did black people. How is that so? Affirmative action includes white women and white women have white male children. So white male children benefit from affirmative action just as much as black people do. So before you start railing off in the comments, just fundamentally know that when a white woman gets a high paying job from affirmative action and she has a white son, that white son then goes to Harvard. Now, what I'm arguing here, just rather simply, is that what black people need to do is to coalesce together and to come up with our black agenda. There is Tariq Nasheed's Foundational Black America Convention, and he's raised somewhere of about $150,000, maybe $200,000, something to that nature for a convention that will be held that will ask these very questions. What is the future of black America and where do we go? Now, I haven't decided if I'm going to this convention, but one of the things that I do know that it, it was in African Americans' history to hold these conventions. Now, what can we do at this convention? We can put up a set of agenda, agreed upon things that black Americans should have and should get, and then go to these black candidates and say that these are the things that black people want. One of them, and I'll just say, and you're asking, well, what could those be? Is that we should raise the level of all HBCUs to the level of Harvard's endowment. I think the highest endowment of any HBCU may be Howard University, probably around three to four, maybe five, six at the most, hundred million dollars, I think. Probably less than that, maybe three hundred million dollars. Harvard's endowment is over well over a billion, maybe about 11 billion. And because HBCUs, particularly those state college HBCUs, Prairie View A&M University, Grambling State, Southern, et cetera, Alabama A&M, Alabama State, they were discriminated against and made poor by state legislatures. What we need to do is to ask and force the, the nation to make those HBCUs whole. So that's just an example. So I would like to hear your thoughts and your comments about these candidates. I think that those candidates that remain, Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, the host of them, Amy Klobuchar, Elizabeth Warren, we need to fundamentally and consistently everywhere they go, every time a black person raises their hands and ask them, well, what is your black agenda? Again, my name is Dr. W. Gabriel Selassie, I, the people's historian, the revolutionary historian, subscribe to my YouTube channel here and be happy to have you subscribe to my podcast at thepeopleshistorian.com. Rastafari.